All right, I'm up. I'm up. Let's get it. Good people, it's your boy Johnny J, and welcome to another film. And look at this business. Look at that. It's looking pretty good. I better hurry. It's not long now. About half an hour to sunrise, and we're probably going to get some light. So uh, I'll talk you through it pretty soon. But stick around because I think we're going to get a light show. Woo, baby! <laughs> Look at this. Unfortunately, not too much cloud up high. But we are getting some cloud over here. Mm. And I am loving the reflection right here. That looks pretty cool. All right, let me get my camera out. Set up a shot, I reckon. Alright, so we're set up here. Things are looking pretty good right now. I'm kind of happy what's happened. Unfortunately, we haven't got a whole lot of high cloud, but what we are getting is some beautiful cloud out in the horizon line. So at this point in time, you can see I've got the headland just coming into the frame there, and I'm going to balance it. I'm going to do something where it breaks the rules a little bit here. I'm going to put the horizon in the middle, and the reason why I'm going to do that is because we've got this epic reflection here. And uh, when you've got reflections and symmetry in your frame like that, you can get away with that horizon line. So a couple of things I'm thinking about for this shot is one, is I'm gonna have to shoot an overexposed shot, particularly to get detail in that dark headland over there, you can see. And I also wanna shoot probably one, a normal exposure and one slightly under. So the normal exposure, just for anything else that's normally exposed, but the under probably for the sky. So at the moment I'm at F8, and to get my undershot where the sky isn't clipping, I am going to have to shoot around a tenth. So two second timer, and uh, I'll just take that shot now. And particularly when the waves are washing out, I want that massive reflection, that's what I'm after. And then I'm gonna shoot one about, see, I'm just moving my shutter speed now, just to get a bit of detail in that headland there. So I'm gonna shoot about an eighth of a second just to get a bit of detail in the headland there boom got that one and the good thing about this as well my focus is super simple i don't even have to really uh, just focus a third into the scene nothing's close to the front of the lens so everything's absolutely sharp the other thing is really nice too when the water rushes out you've got these ripples that look amazing there in the foreground and i really really love what they're doing to the shot so again i'm just waiting for that wave to go out and I'm gonna take another shot here in a minute. Oh, we've got one pushing in. Come on, wave, get out of the way. I need your reflection. <laughs> but actually what you do on, you want the wave to wash in, wet the sand, make it highly reflective, and then wash back out. That's the key. Ah, oh, and I just missed it. The next wave started pushing in a little bit, so it covered up my reflection just a little bit. But that's okay. So even in our final composition, this headlamp, because it's so backlit, it's gonna be quite dark and dominating in the frame, but that's okay. I think I actually don't mind it because it's, it's a massive big point of interest and we've got a lovely reflection of that there. Here we go, here's our reflection. And boom, there we go. Lovely, I'm loving that, it's looking good. All right, so I'm just mixing things up here a little bit. What I did find is when I was a bit higher, the, the waves in the middle, that mid-ground area, was a little bit thick, so my, my fat, and it was a little bit annoying. I didn't, it was okay, but it wasn't great. But what I'm finding now, getting lower down in my shot, 
is that I'm getting a much cleaner composition. It's compressing that mid-ground area and I really like that. It's a, it's a lot nicer in my opinion. So what I'm doing now is just adjusting my shutter speed for that light and actually I'm liking this wider shot now. So I'm at 16 mil. So I'm being able to fit everything in the frame because we've got a, a bit of interest up high in the sky now, which I think is really, really nice for this frame. And you can see, I'm just focusing that third into the scene from the bottom there. And it's a really, really easy shot. You know, my standard exposure is just exposing for that foreground now. Okay, so there's the exposure for the foreground. Then we underexpose a little bit. So we're not getting any clipping there in the highlights on the, on the histogram. Then we take a shot for the mid-ground and then we overexpose there a little bit. And then that's going to get us our detail in our headland there. And then we blend those together in post and there you have it. So I'd quickly summarize what happened because it happened so damn fast. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with the shot. Uh, in the end, what, in, what ended up happening is I got nice and low, it crushed up that mid-ground where the waves were, cleaned up our reflection, I was really happy with the final composition, I think that looks really, really good. Now settings wise, like I said, it was around ISO 100, always trying to keep that ISO as low as possible just to, to limit any possible noise in your frame. And I was at F8, because that's all I needed. f 8s nice, sharp, nice depth of field there. And I focused a third into the scene, up from the bottom. It was really easy scene to focus, because nothing was that close to the lens. All I had to do was deal with the dynamic range, and that, that's the amount of light that you have between the, the darkest shadows and the brightest highlights, okay? My camera can't capture all that, so what I needed to do was to shoot an exposure for the sky, so underexposed, and then shoot an overexposed for the headland, and shoot like a mid-ground sort of exposure for the rest of the scene, and I'll have to blend those in together in Photoshop, but uh, I'll show you that a bit later. But other than that, you know, we got the peak of the light a little bit late, there was that little block of cloud out there, but once the sun got up high enough, we got that nice throw of colour come through. So in the end, everything worked out really nicely. I was happy how that turns out. Let's jump back on the computer and take a bit of a look and I'll show you how I put this one together. All right, here we are in Photoshop and here's that blend I was talking about there. If you just watch this headland, you'll look. You can see if I disable the layer mask there and you can see that was our underexposed for the sky. That was our overexposed shot there for the land. And that was what our mask looks like there. And you can see when you blend them together, this is what you get, a blend of those two photographs and you get lovely detail back in that headland from our overexposed shot. Now back in Lightroom, I just did a few final tweaks there. You can see here's the before and after. Before, after, just darken down the top of that sky there just to hold your eye in so you don't fall out the top of the frame there. And also did some softening with a radial filter here around the light source just to give that a little bit more of a glow. Um, so added some contrast and that in the foreground. I also did some uh, cloud sculpting on those clouds there so I brightened them up a touch you can see they really pop out now and fill the top of that frame and give that eye like I said they weren't there in the original composition that I took and uh, but now you can see they've added some more interest up in the top of that sky which is I think is really really nice one thing that's interesting you can see this is the comp the original composition the first one that I took and there wasn't as many high clouds so I had to crop it long here um, I like the light in this one I think the lights a lot nicer you've got some some uh, um, other tones that are a bit earlier on in the sunrise there but I think the composition is much stronger in this one you know we've got this pointing out to that left hand third and we've got that more detail in the sky and I think the reflections are nicer here as well but the light isn't quite uh, as as nice because it's a bit later on so you've got more of those yellow and blue tones but um, that's just a personal preference anyway happy how this turned out All right, good people, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed another epic photo adventure. Oh, I had fun with this one. Those reflections, mwah, to die for. All right, if you're enjoying these films, please uh, drop me a comment below. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. Always love feedback. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying them. I really appreciate it. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.